Welcome to the chaos sector. We have to address someone for a moment. There is an individual who has left comments, claiming to be WSU Kim. Well, if you are watching, and you have a public photo on your channel, alleged to be WSU Kim, then you wouldn't mind us using that photo, in connection to your interview. If this is in fact WSU Kim, then we will listen to what you have to say, and put the pieces together. Keep in mind, this is another interview she had, so we will see if everything pans out. So, but then, when I called at 5 o'clock, when we got the alert on the way home, she knew everything that had happened. Mm -hmm. Down to, like, the injuries and where the kids were, and that Dylan and... Dylan and Bethany were in the downstairs room. First of all, we have confusion, and someone is lying. In Dylan's affidavit, she is on the second floor, not the first floor with Bethany. Furthermore, would WSU Kim suggest Dylan was in Bethany's bedroom, or in the other bedroom? If so, how does she spot anyone from her bedroom on the second floor? Since we know WSU Kim is being informed by her daughter, did Dylan tell someone she was on the first floor? Confusion. They knew the guys who were there. It wasn't just one. They knew who they were. There was a lot of loud noise. And um, they locked themselves in their rooms and went to sleep. I said, or we're hiding, whatever. But I said, why didn't they call the police? She goes, I don't know. So, WSU Kim is claiming Bethany and Dylan knew who were in the home, murdering their housemates. Mind you, she is painting a scenario during the time frame the murders took place. They knew the guys who were there. It wasn't just one. They knew who they were. There was a lot of loud noise. And, um... How could she know this? The only way she would know this is someone spilled the beans. And you know what? That person has exculpatory evidence. I believe Bethany is the one who relayed that information, not Dylan. How about that? I'll just say it for you, since you're watching. That all happened and the roommates were just asleep? They weren't asleep. They were awake. They heard it all. They knew who it was. And I don't know, in the translation, if... There was had, saw three people inside and one outside watching, or two people inside and one outside watching. So from what I've been able to boil down and get piece, pieces together from what I know, like from, and I think Wazoo's involved too, don't get me wrong here, I'm not just saying you have I. Mm -hmm. Both schools are involved. Um, and not just because he was a teacher there. Oops, caught something. She claims WSU was also involved, not because Koberger was a teacher there. This means, excluding Koberger, the university was involved. She's a fast talker, but not fast enough, we pay close attention. So here's the setting, UI was involved, and WSU was also involved. So if she's pointing out the universities are involved, doesn't this align with the theory of it being drug-related? Yep. How did, they, how did he get vetted? Who is vetting him to be a teacher in classroom 12 and my kids sit in classroom 13? Who's doing that? And I stand behind everything I say, and I've said everything to the FBI immediately. When I thought discovered a lie, I called the FBI and I told them the lie. I've done, I've, um, I have called the schools. I've tried, I'm working right now on having Great Girl suspended. My kid loves Great Girl. She loves it. But it is so out of control. Well, 10 kids have died since last, what, February? 10? At that U I know. At which at, one, at U of I. 10 students have died since the Idaho murders? Now if we put this into perspective, we have to assume that the image of Moscow is not that peachy, as many claimed. It was so safe, that people would leave their doors unlocked. Ten students murdered, or died, indicates there is more violence and crime in Moscow than what many have depicted. Ten students don't just pop up dead in a blink of an eye. Can we suggest that those ten students' deaths are linked to the housemates? Yet the alleged murderer and co-burger is sitting in court for those murders? It's just so weird that from, was it eight in the morning that the first phone call was made to like sorority sisters at Pi Beta Phi? Was it, is yeah. that? So yeah. from eight o'clock till 1158, that's literally four hours of time that Correct. goes by. Right. And she, if she was awake, like she says, that was eight hours and she heard all of that. So with the is do you know for sure that is what the phone calls were about when the roommates called at 8 a.m. and I think what I heard and I'm not sure which of the girls said it was they were getting rid of everything in the house they were cleaning the house which would explain the van shoe print wait you're not sure which girl said it didn't your daughter inform you about which housemate was relaying the information and I'm not sure which of the girls said it was they were getting rid of everything in the house they were cleaning the house come on now either it's Dylan or Bethany and since we assume Dylan is the bad apple here it was more than likely Bethany Dylan and others were cleaning up, getting rid of the drugs, and Bethany was observing, making the necessary phone calls. So with the is do you know for sure that is what the phone calls were about when the roommates called at 8am and- Might as well identify the housemate, 
but I know why you wouldn't. If you claim it was Bethany who made that phone call, this proves she has exculpatory evidence, based on not only that phone call, but what she observed, which wasn't included in her police interview. The cat's out of the bag. Another thing is, I mean, to get rid of, um, you know, it's like, it doesn't take four hours. So yeah, it's like, so I don't know, they were coming up, I think they were coming up with the narrative, because the narrative that was sent to my daughter at around 10 in the morning, um, it was that four students were killed. They were five pie fives. So anyway, they said that they were stabbed to death, and they said about Bethany's injuries. And then, wait, whose injuries? Yeah. Bethany? Uh, not Bethany. I'm oh. sorry about Maddie's injuries. Yeah. And I don't know if you know their injuries or not. Mm -hmm. But another thing, they is, all knew that. That's interesting because from what I had, what I had heard <laughs> was the kid that discovered the bodies. But what you're, from what you're telling me, it seems like multiple people knew about the injuries before the so-called person so that's not true then so he might have been called over see i don't i can't imagine that hunter chapin would have not immediately called 911 part is really because i know there were guys there as well so you know for sure there were other guys that stayed over overnight i didn't know that there were other guys there so wsu kim is claiming she knew there were other guys there overnight keyword overnight which means there were phone calls earlier than even 8 a.m like we mentioned in a previous episode don't know if she's alluding to evidence, or trying to cover up evidence. We have to keep reiterating, her claims are from what a housemate relayed to others. This has to be Bethany. I think we can all agree with this. By the time the authorities got there, all of the drugs were dumped, but more importantly, there was tampering of a crime scene. Obstruction of justice as well, as they didn't call the authorities at the time the murders were discovered. With this scenario, we have individuals at the home murdering the housemates, Bethany and Dylan knew who they were, and there's an additional individual there, who is alluded to being Koberger. Let's be honest here, Koberger is not there. But I do think they were sucked into it because of Sigma Chi, and I do believe it's Sigma Chi. This is bigger than them, and it's bigger than Moscow Police, which is why I call the FBI on the 13th, not Moscow Police or Pullman. Sigma Chi was responsible? There were drugs involved as well? Now I would like to know. Are you suggesting that Sigma Chi are responsible for, or literally, murdered those housemates? Because based on your statements, there is a smoking gun dynamic here. Could you please elaborate on who is directly linked to the murders? Or is that too much information to put out here? That's fine, we can accept the smoking gun I guess. But wait, you went to the FBI? Could you share what you told the FBI? Because whatever you told them, obviously it led to only one person being arrested, as opposed to who you allude to being involved which are many people. If the information you gave the FBI is including the very individuals you claim were at the home, and who were depicted as the murderers. They were awake. They heard it all. They knew who it was. They knew who it was. They knew who it was. How does the FBI focus on Koberger, instead of the individuals who were responsible for the murders? Can you answer that question in the comments? Since you claim to be WSU Kim don't tell me, you framed Koberger to protect those individuals. That would be very disgraceful of you but we'll give you a chance to explain it all. They're afraid. Wow. I do think that Brian was a mastermind. I do not believe he was alone because the information first given to my daughter was that there were three people there. Three p And this was at what time were the three people there? At eight in the morning or at night? When, that, when, the, when apparently when the murders happened. But Now, here's the problem with your claim. You state, quote, I do believe Brian was the mastermind, unquote. You also claim that he wasn't alone at the home. Wow. I do think that... Brian was a mastermind. I do not believe he was alone. What information relayed to you by your daughter proves that Brian Koberger was at that home? Remember, a creep could be anyone based on your daughter's accounts, based on what she was told. How do you know Koberger was there, let alone be some mastermind behind everything? What is the motive? What is the connection? What ties Koberger to those housemates, to physically be there to murder them? Also, if you claim he was the mastermind, then the other individuals there had to have been with, I repeat, with Koberger, right? But if you claim Sigma Chi was involved, are you suggesting Sigma Chi and Koberger conspired to murder those housemates, due to a shakedown? Or wait, were there two things happening at once? There was a shakedown, then, after that occurred, Koberger, all by himself, had murdered those housemates? This is not adding up, and the reason it's not adding up, is because you're adding your opinion about what unfolded, as opposed to sticking with what your daughter was told. Let me elaborate, your daughter told you that there were multiple people at the home, including a quote, creeper. That's all you know. So either these individuals, keyword, individuals, are the murderers, or Koberger somehow tiptoed around those individuals, 
and murdered those housemates. They can't all be there at the same time. I sense misdirection, as you previously claimed it was centered around Sigma Chi. But I do think there was something to it because of Sigma Chi, and I do believe it's Sigma Chi. This is bigger than them, and it's bigger than Moscow Police, which is why I call the FBI on my third team, not Moscow Police or Pullman. WSU Kim claimed she called the FBI on November 13th, which was the same day, I repeat, the same day the victims were discovered. But she doesn't give details about what she told the FBI. Based on her daughter's accounts, we assume she called the FBI about three individuals and a creeper who was at the home, and the surviving housemates knew those individuals. Now what did the FBI do about this information, because this information is being relayed from one of the surviving housemates? There wasn't any investigation into these individuals, because there was no report that they even existed in any police report. And for her to claim that the reason she didn't go to Moscow PD, or even Pullman PD, claiming it was bigger than what their police departments can handle, indicates suspicion in my eyes. Why is this? Because the first form of law enforcement would be the police, and then the police seek assistance from the FBI, if needed. You don't skip the police to inform the FBI about a murder because the FBI doesn't get involved unless the police department is incapable, yes, incapable, of solving the case. Mind you, this was November 13th, the same day of the murders. So she doesn't have trust in police departments to track down the murderers when it was the same day. You haven't given them time to even investigate, let alone track down murderers. WSU Kim went directly to the FBI, as if she knew the police couldn't handle the case, right? but yet she's asking why the housemates didn't call the police? Yet you didn't call the police about the information you obtained? Could it be, she went directly to the FBI, because there was someone specifically in mind, she wanted them to covertly track? Once again, she doesn't give details about what she told the FBI. What did you go straight to the FBI about? If you're watching, can you explain that to the audience? Because I'm starting to believe, Koberger was already framed before we knew who he was. What connection would Koberger have with Sid Mackay? Around maybe, four in the morning. Maybe Dylan thought they were just going to be shaking them up for the money. So the three people standing outside was at four in the morning and one was a creepy guy. I think I remember hearing that one was creepy. Yeah, they call they just call him the creeper. There's a lot of creepers that hang out there. I don't know. I think there's more questions to be asked. Mm -hmm. So my detector test is to be taken. I know they don't hold up in court, but they certainly work well to get, you know what I mean? Yeah. I think the only one who passed one is that Brian because he's such a sociopath. Brian's a sociopath? But simultaneously, you're claiming he wasn't alone? If he wasn't alone, why is there only one person in police custody right now? Tell the truth, and you won't have this type of scrutiny from the chaos sector. And you when, know, when I, Brian was arrested, okay. the first thing Brian said was, oh, was anyone else arrested? Well, what I do think is the reason he wanted to be extradited so quickly is because he's got something, he knows every single thing that these kids have done. When, you, when, she, when they felt like... That's called deflection, my friends. The interviewer inquired about Koberger questioning if someone else was arrested. Now if WSU Kim is presenting a setting where Koberger is being accompanied by other culprits, or even killers, why doesn't she address those other individuals, who she herself has placed at the home? In the setting she is presenting, Koberger would be one of many, yes, one of many, who had murdered those housemates. He couldn't do that alone. Yet, she doesn't draw attention to those individuals. Mind you, Koberger would be caught, while the others are still lurking around. They could be responsible for the additional 10 deaths in Idaho, right? Yet she is only focusing on Koberger. He was already caught, it's your job to give authorities leads to the other culprits, since you know they were there, right? Was anyone else arrested? Well, what I do think is, the reason he wanted to be extradited so quickly, is because he's got something, he knows every single thing that these kids have done. When you, when she, when they felt like... I guess not. They were being watched, stalked. They were being watched. They were being watched diligently. I don't not believe. I know I believe he's been in that house before. I think my understanding is he had been in the house, but it was a creeper and they kicked him up to the curb and wasn't allowed to come back. That is what I think happened like a few weeks prior. And I've told the police that. And that is because I've gotten that from the girls because. Wait a minute. Let's slow down because you're rambling. You mentioned how Koberger had something on those students. Now, what would this be? It has to be related to drugs and drug trafficking. But in the same breath, you claim he was stalking them? If he had something on them, what purpose would it serve if he didn't utilize this in some beneficial way? Such as snitching to the police, reporting them to the dean at the university? If Koberger was stalking them, he couldn't care less what they were doing, or involved in. But the question is, how would you know Koberger had something on them? Oh, the girls told you? 
And when, when Brian was arrested, the first thing Brian said was, oh, was anyone else arrested? Well, what I do think is the reason he wanted to be extradited so quickly is because he's got something. He knows every single thing that these kids are done. When, you, when, she, when they felt like they were being watched, stopped, they were being watched. They were being watched diligently. I don't not believe. I know I believe he's been in that house before. I think my understanding is he had been in the house, but it was a creeper and they kicked him up to the curb and wasn't allowed to come back. That is what I think happened like a few weeks prior. And I told the police that. And that is because I've gotten that from the girls because Well doesn't that open up a can of maggots? If the girls informed you that Coburger had dirt on those housemates, doesn't this mean they also were aware of him specifically? How would they know he had dirt on them, unless those girls, who we assume attend WSU, had knowledge of him? This is looking more like a frame to me, and unfortunately, WSU Kim is right in the thick of it. It's just like we broke down. WSU Kim was aware of Koberger, through whispers at WSU about him knowing about drug trafficking. Students will talk, and word got back to WSU Kim's daughter about Koberger, and this is how she knows about him. You told the police about Koberger specifically? Yet you didn't claim to tell the police about the other individuals at the home? Nor the Sigma Chi's involvement? Now doesn't this look like Koberger was the scapegoat? Sure does. Now WSU Kim, please explain what you're claiming in this interview. So your daughter mentioned that a few weeks prior someone was kicked out that was a creeper like is that something you heard from your that, daughter that she's she no she just thinks she doesn't um mm -hmm. she just she was told it was a creeper and you're stuttering now the cat definitely has your tongue the reason wsu kim is stuttering is because the creeper is someone who would have interacted with the housemates in some capacity meaning he had access to that home by way of some form of get this invitation you can't be kicked out if you're not invited first who let him in who in the house allowed him to come inside? Or was he just hanging around the doorsteps, trying to get in? He would drive to that home, knowing he wasn't invited to a party? How would he know there was a party? Unless someone told him. And if someone notified him about a party at that home, this means Koberger would not be a stranger technically. You see how this starts to break down? A creeper can be anyone, and WSU Kim has simply placed that stigma onto Koberger, justifying him being there. Which creates a motive. The daughter claims a creeper was kicked out of the home weeks prior, but that creeper has not been identified. You can't make it Koberger without any proof. I don't not believe. I know I believe he's been in that house before. I think my understanding is he had been in the house, but it was a creeper and they kicked him up to the curb and wasn't allowed to come back. That is what I think happened like a few weeks prior. And I've told the police that. And that is because I've gotten that from the girls because So your daughter mentioned that a few weeks prior someone was kicked out, that was a creeper. Like, is that just something you heard from your that, daughter? That she's, she, no, she just thinks, she, no, she just, she doesn't, she just thinks, um, she just, she, she just thinks, um, she, no, she just thinks, she was told it was a creeper, and... It's one thing to speculate, you know, give your opinion, or theory about something. But you are claiming that someone specifically had visited that home, without any proof. Now you claim you're speaking for your daughter, but actually, you're taking away from what the main point was, from your daughter's accounts. We started with the daughter being called about the murders, and who was physically at the home that night. If it was relayed to you, that it was three people there, along with a so-called creeper, Bethany and Dylan knew who those individuals were, and, this is when the murders had taken place, we need to focus on this specific time frame. But she doesn't want to stay in this time frame. It's just, I can't wrap my head around the fact that, like, at, because we all thought, at 11.50, 11.58, the roommates woke up, saw the carnage, called the police. No, they were awake four hours earlier, and that yeah. is huge. That's not in the affidavit. See, this is what she should be concerned about. We know she questioned it in a previous interview, but this one, she's literally all over the place. If WSU Kim claims the housemates were not, I repeat, were not, asleep, and knew who was there that night, as they hid in the bedrooms, wait. Before I go any further, let's refresh your memory, and yours too, WSU Kim. That all happened and the roommates were just asleep? They weren't asleep. They were awake. They heard it all. They knew who it was. So WSU Kim claims they weren't asleep, meaning they were wide awake during the murders. Also, contrary to what the interviewer suggests, it was not four hours prior to 11.58, they were awake throughout the entire massacre. So if WSU Kim is claiming Koberger was the killer, exactly how does she explain this scenario, with multiple individuals there alongside Koberger, and, somehow Dylan being on the first floor instead of the second? 
In addition, claiming that the housemates knew who the individuals were, alludes to them knowing they were responsible for the murders. Because once again, Koberger can't be there committing the murders, with those individuals there at the same damn time. Do you have an explanation for this scenario? And I don't know, in the translation, if there were so three people inside and one outside watching, or two people inside and one outside watching. You are literally all over the place, and that's not a good sign. Someone was watching. They were making sure the coast was clear. For who? Koberger? Now who in the hell are these individuals with Koberger? Are they Sigma Chi members? No mention of any connection between Koberger and some fraternities. You're not like the rest of us, out here trying to put pieces together. You have been informed from your daughter, about what she was told, from one of those housemates. You even claim that the housemates knew who the individuals were, did your daughter tell you that the housemates told others that they knew who they were? If so, don't you have enough evidence right there? Stick to what was told to you. Don't conflate things. Mind you, WSU Kim claimed she spoke to the FBI later on November the 13th, and had also spoke to the police. They would have a potential suspect within 48 hours of those murders. Now which one is it here? WSU Kim claims there was a quote, shakedown, and there was a quote, creeper there as well. Now this creeper would be Koberger, right? So he would wait till they accomplished the shakedown, drive off for a minute, then come back, and murder the housemates? That is simply ridiculous. Or, Koberger and the others were all together, for the shakedown. But then Koberger apparently had an ulterior motive on top of that, as he stalked one of the girls. His partners in crime leave, he comes back, and murders the housemates? Just as ridiculous. What do we make of this? We scratch somebody out of the equation, and that would be Koberger, because there is no motive established for him. Also, she claims that it was a shakedown, so it's drug-related. She even suggests the housemates along with others, were dumping the drugs, right? But I noticed, she never mentions Emma Bonnie Bailey, or Demetrius Clyde Robinson. WSU Kim, don't you think they play a part in the murders? Everyone in Moscow knows about Bonnie and Clyde, and Shirley and Pullman as well. If it was drug-related, who's more likely to plot attacks against housemates? Let me guess, the three individuals were there, Koberger was there, and Bonnie and Clyde were there. Damn, there's no way the housemates survive, with all of those individuals there, to harm them for their own specific reasons, right? Just tell the public what your daughter claimed. Because the more you speak, the more you reveal there was a frame. See at the chaos sector, we won't call you a liar, no that's too easy. Based on your own words, yes, your own words, prove that you are a part of a frame. We're not plucking this theory out of the air, your claims are generating that theory. So if you have an explanation for what you have stated in this interview, please clarify. If your explanation pans out, then we will give it the benefit of the doubt. But if it's not clarified, we can only assume you're a part of the frame job. I believe her, because that's what all the girls said, and that's the most plausible story. The, nothing else makes sense. For her to have opened the door and seen him, and him to walk by her, he would not have done that, he would have killed her. Mm -hmm. and, and, I don't, and if she was frozen, how did she shut the door? And lock it, right? She wasn't on the first floor, she wasn't on the second floor. And I actually think that the girl who never moved in is the one probably who has a lot of answers. Why did the police say she was on the second floor? She was downstairs with Bethany. And you know that for a fact because your daughter told you that? Yeah, well that's it, that. I know that for a fact because that's what my daughter told me. Good question, yet WSU Kim claims she knows this as a fact, because her daughter told her this? So this means, one of the housemates, notified others that they both were on the first floor? Dylan's bedroom is on the second floor, across the hall from Zana's bedroom. We understand why Kaylee was in Madison's bedroom, they're best friends. But can you explain why Dylan would be on the first floor, when her bedroom is on the second? Were they both in Bethany's bedroom? Or was Dylan hiding in the vacant bedroom? You claim it was a fact, so give details about where Dylan was located, since one of the housemates relayed this information. Oh no explanation, just claiming it to be the case? We would like to hear from your daughter, because you have distorted what she was told, and put your spin on it. In essence, it makes what you say invalid. And she saw them out the window. They saw them out the window, mm -hmm. and I think they knew they were coming. Pay attention my friends, because WSU Kim is leaking and lying at the same time. Notice she initially says she saw them out the window, and then changed it to they saw them out the window. And she saw them out the window. They saw them out the window. You know who saw who out the window? 
You guessed it, Bethany. But if she were to say Bethany saw them out the window, this would indicate Bethany has the very exculpatory evidence. And she saw them out the window. Mind you, Bethany and Dylan have two different accounts, which determine what truly happened. So she injects Dylan into that equation, eliminating the exculpatory evidence Bethany would have, because she was the one who saw them out the window specifically. And of course, we know Bethany was on the first floor by herself, at least during the attacks. Dylan may have gone downstairs at some point, but she was in her bedroom on the second floor. With Bethany downstairs, peeking through the window, observing individuals approaching the home, this is a specific account that only Bethany has, just like Koberger's defense claims. And she saw them out the window. You understand? I'd like to know if somebody ate that hand, whatever was in that jack in the box bag, why the receipt was not correct, because the receipt is not correct if you pull it up. It just has an X on it. Did mm -hmm. she order it? Does it follow a Venmo somewhere? There's so many uh, details. People, and I That's a red herring, plain and simple. Let's review this interview. WSU Kim claims the housemates were awake and knew who was at the home. She claims that the creeper was also there, and this is alleged to be Koberger. But how could Koberger act alone, yet there be others there at the same time? Wouldn't this destroy Koberger's entire alleged plan? How could he murder anyone, with others at the home, and the housemates obviously being aware of those individuals there? Surely everyone would be notified about the so-called shakedown, right? Kaylee, Madison, Zanna, Ethan, Bethany, and Dylan, would all be aware of the shakedown, and also notice the so-called creeper as well. It's impossible for him to be there during the so-called shakedown. I reiterate, based on WSU Kim's claim, all of them were there at the same time. She claims Bethany and Dylan were awake, and knew who the individuals were. They knew the guys who were there, it wasn't just one. They knew who they were, there was a lot of loud noise, and um, they locked themselves in their rooms and went to sleep. I said, or, we're hiding, whatever. But I said, why didn't they call the police? She goes, I don't know. Now, if she is claiming they knew who the individuals were, doesn't this mean one of those housemates identified those individuals? So wouldn't WSU Kim also know who those individuals were? Yet, somehow she didn't inform the FBI, nor Moscow PD, or even Pullman PD, about these individuals. The only information that she admits to giving Moscow PD, was about a creeper, a lone creeper, not, I repeat, not the other individuals at the home. I don't not believe, I know, I believe he's been in that house before. I think, my understanding is, he had been in the house, but it was a creeper and they kicked him up to the curb, and wasn't allowed to come back. That is what I think happened like a few weeks prior, and I've told the police that. And that is, because I've gotten that from the girls, because... Does this sound strange to you? Doesn't it sound like she pointed the finger at Koberger? Because who would be the creeper that she's informing Moscow PD about? They have to be identified, otherwise, there is an anonymous individual who can't be tracked. So it has to be Koberger being identified, before, I repeat, before the DNA identified him. Mind you, there would be no point in notifying Moscow PD about Koberger being in that home prior, when they had already arrested him, based on his DNA found on a knife sheath, and spotting his vehicle in surveillance near the home. They have their guy. You would call and notify them about Koberger being there prior, when you know he was already arrested, due to matching his DNA on the knife sheath? And how could you prove he was the creeper at the home? It took approximately a month before he was arrested. Let's see, WSU Kim called the FBI November 13th, but she didn't give a date of when she called Moscow PD about the so-called creeper. I would like to know that date, it determines a lot. We assume it was before Koberger was arrested, which means this is looking like a collective effort in framing Koberger. I want to mention this, because it supports the theory of WSU Kim's involvement in a frame against Koberger. If your daughter was notified about details from the housemates that night, and you obtain that information, go to the FBI, and even Moscow PD, why wouldn't you have your daughter give those details instead of you? Surely Moscow PD would attempt to speak with her, and include what she was told, wait, what am I thinking? If they spoke to your daughter, and obtained the same information you are claiming, wouldn't there be more than one person arrested? After all, you claim the housemates knew who the individuals were at the home, right? Let me guess, the reason you decided to handle the situation, is because you wanted to change what was told to you, and with only Koberger being arrested, doesn't this indicate you never informed the FBI, and Moscow PD, about the other individuals at the home that night? More evidence you were involved in framing Koberger. Once again, please explain why there was no mention of additional suspects being pursued, even though you claim there were multiple people there that night, during, I repeat, during the murders. We're starting to see the inner workings of why Koberger was framed, and it's not solely from the FBI and Moscow PD in fact, 
I would suggest they only pursued him based on what they were told. This is not looking good. Once you deviated from what your daughter told you, everything became invalid. Like mentioned, you're not throwing lies out there, more so, you're covering up the truth. We see between the lines. You shouldn't have left a comment, now you're in the hot seat. This is the chaos sector, 